The Ball Hockey International St. Catharines Big Top sits right next to the Welland Canal. The ships were coming in all day through the locks yesterday. We had a great view and our uh, fabulous crew were able to capture uh, a lot of great footage there and inside the building as well. I'm Matthew Carrick. I return alongside the JVI Sports Network to co continue our coverage of Ball Hockey International St. Catharines Spring Teaser Youth Ontario Cup Championship presented by Bauer this weekend. Today is the medal rounds and we will hand out uh, gold medals by the end of the day. But first, uh, we're going to look at the Bantam Division, the Cherry Pickers and the Red Light Rebels get things started today. The Cherry Pickers will occupy the home bench and the Red Light Rebels visiting. Chad Asseltine will join me uh, throughout the day. We've got a number of games as we take you through to four o'clock and we are more than happy to have you. A reminder to follow us on Twitter throughout the day at JVI Video, at Webcast Sports and at BHI St. Catharines for all the scores and updates. And of course, uh, DVDs of these games are made available and you can contact our crew for those updates. Just about ready to go here inside. The Bantam teams are on the floor and we will come back after this quick timeout with game day action. Our first overtime game of the weekend, of course, yesterday. All final scores ended in a tie if we got there. The St. Kitts snipers facing the Niagara Rampage. They were our opener yesterday. They played a fantastic game, a 6-4 final in that one for St. Catharines today. They sit tied 4-4 in overtime. Of course, if we go to overtime today, We'll play five minutes and then we'll work to a shootout. If more time is required and that's how we'll determine the elimination rounds here this afternoon. As we said, Bantam Division action coming your way. A look at the visiting bench of the Red Light Rebels. There were, they will wear red rather with uh, black numbers. And it appears that they will run right to left in this opening period, the Cherry Pickers in their navy uniforms with the red lettering. Occupy the home bench and they will run left to right. Starting goaltenders for this matchup for the Rebels, Brain, Braden League, Braden Legault rather. As we understand there was a typo on our game sheet yesterday, Legault getting the start for the Rebels. Had the start yesterday in their afternoon game. And for the cherry pickers, Doug Boyd returns to the cage. It was Joseph McBrady who had to throw on the goalie gear about halfway through that game in the second period after a scrum in front of the net. Tyler Summerfield was subsequently suspended for the Thruway Mufflers team. Also involved in that altercation was Anthony King. King is back in as is Doug Boyd and 
full contingent on the bench for both these sides, the Cherry Pickers and the Red Light Rebels. Game time scheduled to begin at 11 o'clock Eastern. We are awaiting the arrival of the game officials. And I believe one of the officials at least is, is actually refing this overtime game. The Niagara Rampage in the pink uniforms in St. Kitts are in the yellows. And of course our uh, our view just behind the net of the Niagara Rampage in yesterday, St. Kitts. There's their star, Spencer Smith, the tallest player on the floor at this moment. He had a hat trick in their opening game, which really turned the tide. And they were led by Dylan McFadden as well, worse St. Catharines. Made some timely saves early on. It looked like Niagara was gonna run away with it, but St. Catharines did a good job of hanging in and coming to life late. And in their second game, I believe they played the Rebels again. Did St. Kitts, the team that we're about to watch. And again, same story, the dump and chase. A bit of a size disadvantage for St. Kitts in that game. And uh, they were able to weather the tide and come back to, to tie that game as well. There is the siren as it goes, and it looks like shootout time in our outdoor game. So excitement here on the outdoor game. This to decide who will play in the Bantam final. Later this afternoon, the shootouts will come right into your living room. Tyler Van Gool in net for the Niagara Rampage. Dylan McFadden in net for the St. Kitts Snipers. Again, the Rampage in their pink uniforms with black. And St. Kitts in the yellow uniforms. Here comes the first shooter. Couple fakes, McFadden goes down, <laughs> and that's what he did all day yesterday, pumps himself up. Does McFadden as he makes the opening save. And St. Kitts will send their first shooter out. In on Van Gool. Goes for the poke check, goes around it, and they score. This St. Kitts team is my partner, Chad Asseltine. There's the Selly at the end, too. I'd be surprised if Spencer Smith doesn't take one of these for St. Kitts, but Chad pointing out part of that team made up of Adam players, the St. Kitts. McFadden staring down a, a shooter again. This time the blocker comes out. Possibly the top goaltender of the tournament in any age group. Dylan McFadden based on what we've seen over the past two days. And here he is, Spencer Smith. The hat trick in that game and a late addition to the lineup in St. Kitt's second game late in the afternoon yesterday near the end of our coverage. Understand because he went and played an ice hockey game. He bears down on Van Gool, fakes the shot. That's how he scored his hat trick and then brings it back and puts it five hole. And with two saves the other way for McFadden in the three round shootout, that'll give the victory to St. Kitts. 
The St. Kitts Snipers will compete for the gold medal later this afternoon. We'll be with you until the end of the afternoon, so if you want to see more of St. Kitts. Join us at 2 p.m. Awaiting the start of the Cherry Pickers and the Red Light Rebels to determine the St. Kitts Snipers opponent. On the other side of this break, we will have the opening faceoff and the start of our coverage here on the JVI Sports Network. BHI St. Catherine Spring Teaser presented by Bauer. Once again, we're on the shores of the Welland Canal, Bial Hockey International, St. Catharines under the big top. 
once again. Two rinks going today. We saw a great matchup outside going into overtime in the Pee Wee division. I was mistakenly referred to that as the Bantams, but the Pee Wee division, St. Kitts Snipers will go on to play some dogs who were victorious earlier today. The other Bantam semifinal outside. We bring you inside now and look at the Red Light Rebels wearing red with the black numbers. They occupy the visitor's bench and will run right to left. Being backstopped by Brayden Legault. Matthew Carrick alongside Chad Asseltine who joins me for the call of this one and we're glad to have you on the JVI Sports Network. Ball Hockey's International St. Catharines. Spring teaser in the Youth Ontario Cup presented by Bauer. A great day of ball hockey action yesterday and we're set for the knockout rounds and early on Doug Boyd goes down for the cherry pickers and the ball goes over top of him I believe when was that the captain Colby Flett on the doorstep looked like Doug found himself a little off balance there uh, went to make the original save wasn't able to stay square to the ball and that, that was that was how it found its home The sun, the sun's been up for a while. It's not rising. They're sparking the lights here inside the tent. 30 seconds into this one just to take away some of the shadowing down on the floor and allow the players to see a bit better. As the ball goes into the corner for Luke Grenier, brought back out in front. There's Flett again on the doorstep. And again, it gets behind Boyd. Forty-two seconds in, it's two nothing, and already the coach is upset. He just, or no, he's praising his team. Sorry, they're they're up two nothing. That's a replay of the first goal, and then here comes the second. We'll take you right from the faceoff. We heard the Rebels coach. Yell to his players on the floor, dump it in. Pupo does that right off the opening faceoff after the second goal. And it's brought into the corner here by Grenier again. Grenier's got Sean General with him, and it comes back in front. This time, I believe, Tyler Van Gool on the crease. Cherry Pickers are going to have to tighten up this defensive zone coverage, or it's going to be a long day. We're a minute five into the game, 3 nothing already. You can see their uh, red lights able to just park themselves out in front in three goals, carbon copy right from the crease. Yesterday we saw a lot from Sean General. He was doing the work in the corner. Nice job by the Rebels to sort of leave him there in the corner and then step back out. You can hear from the coaches the Strategy for the Rebels in this game should be dump and chase. As Kristen Birch gets it up, she's going to dump it into the corner. For the cherry pickers, a lot more finesse trying to lead the breakout pass. This is the third time they've done that. Comes on the stick of Ticey Cowan. He's just going to shoot it wide. Up to the line for Jordan Katz. This shot goes wide. Adriano Pupo is there. And Tyler Van Gool, he's going to leave it for the captain. Glett takes the shot. And Colby Flett saved by Boyd. Rebound controlled by Cherry Pickers. Active stick from Pupo keeps it in. And Birch fell. She couldn't get the stick on that ball. So it comes back for Cowan in front. And Ticey Cowan rips it in the glove hand of Lego. Able to get up and make that save. Faceoff will come to the left and first line change of the game. Coming here for Red Light Rebels, they get a three spot in the first two minutes and 10 seconds. Another face off here, General controls it, tries to stick handle through the defense. Then he looked back for Aiden Veal. Veal for General again. In the corner, Gabriel Gagnon. 
Going after General. General in front. Cowan's there. He's got the stick skills. But an active poke check there by Legault. From right in front. And then it's cleared down the floor by the Rebels. Into the corner. Jacob Myers. Veal again down the near boards. Justin Haim circles his own net. He's going to send it up the far side. The official signaling for the icing call. And Myers will get there and ball will come all the way back as the cherry pickers change again. Once again, Matthew Carrick, Chad Asseltine will be in for the afternoon. Well, it looks like the cherry pickers have been able to to grab a little bit of that momentum back. Uh, they've at least stemmed the tide at this point. Minute five into the game, being down by three, but the last two minutes they've seemed to control the play. General drops low to keep it down after taking that initial shot. Comes back out in front. And here's Cowan. He's the guy that did the damage yesterday. Cowan getting away from Van Gool. Cowan, he's got Sean General. General. Getting in, looked like he tried to go low on Lego. He didn't, wasn't sure where it was. The pads came down in time. Myers far side. He looks for the glove. And again, Lego gets it on. Pupo. A bit of a hello there for Aiden Veal. Thought he got too close as the ball was covered. Cowan over to General. This is where a lot of the offense happens for the cherry pickers. Or at least it did yesterday. And they're going to start from the point again. Back for Myers. Away from him, Jordan Katz. Katz circles the net. Kristen Birch on him. Birch is going to push him the long way around. Wrap around through the legs and scores. That was all Jordan Katz. Great ball control by Jordan there. 14 from 88. See, Jordan takes a look here, the near side, and just keeps going around. Like his chance is going around with the wraparound, tucks it in, actually got five full as he was able to come out from behind the net a little bit and open, uh, open the go up and found, uh, found a little spot there. The assist going to Ticey Cowan who took it in. Single effort. And Cowan gets it again. Stick handles around Birch. It's going to go around Pupo now. Cowan again. Ticey Cowan runs out of space. <laughs> he brings it back. And top corner. Just when we thought it was going to be all of the Rebels, the Cherry Pickers come back with two of their own. And that's ball hockey for you. Can be a lot of goal scoring very quick. Similar to lacrosse. You can see Legault looked like he was looking poke check there. I think Cowie recognized it, pull, was able to pull it out, give himself a shooting lane. Dom, do you want the hard ones or softer? I, I got this. Try that one. Dumping down into the corner. That'll go for an icing call. Face off there, comes back in front. Van Gool was all alone. And they call for the deflection. Kristen Birch racing in. Jacob Myers, a little bit faster on her there. And around the corner, Jordan Katz. He tries the wraparound again. That's how he scored the opener for the Cherry Pickers. And the dump and chase now for Van Gool. Ticey Cowan with him. Thought Van Gool got there first and then overran it. As Cowan returns. Gets up for center. Off the legs of Adriano Pupo. He grabs the pass out of midair, sends it up for center. Far side for Colby Flett. Flett kicks it over. Van Gool looking for it, but General in stride. Is looking to counterattack, and Cowan has to rechase, though, as Van Gool sends it deep. Back half of the opening period. 
in favor of the Red Light Rebels representing the visiting team. Home bench occupied by the Cherry Pickers in this one. Cherry Pickers in the Navy uniforms. In front, that one dumped the length of the floor. And with Jacob Myers coming in, a couple Rebels down there as well. Doug Boyd is just going to cover up. Made the good decision there. Take the, take the face off, regroup, get set. Got a chin strap issue here for Frankie Ravenda. He thought he was being sent off the floor, but the official will help him out. And Ravenda gets to stay as Andrew Batista to the face-off dot. Loses that to Brandon Foster, and then it's just out of the reach of Sean General, and will go for icing. Good look by Cowan. I don't think General actually thought that pass was coming through because uh, we've seen him run a lot faster than that. As he walked past us, he had a pretty big grin on his face, and there looks like maybe they're going to set up the same play, Cowan down low. And General open at the far faceoff dot. Yeah, here he Running comes. a lot harder this time. And this time Cowan's going to take it himself. Four cherry pickers come out over the blue line. Cowan's one of them, and he scores. So they give them the same look on the play. Just a little variation in the stick skills of Ticey Cowan. He set them up back in his own corner. Uh, he waited till the Rebels were sort of flat-footed and then he just took off, used his speed, went down the wing, was able to pick corner far side over the glove. Imagine he starts to use his teammates, how skilled this kid would be. 88-14. <laughs> He had general wide open on the bat for a backdoor pass there as well, but uh, he had the confidence in his shot. He's, so far, uh, that proved himself right. Here comes Jordan Katz. Picked up his second point of the game on Cowan's latest goal. Katz in the corner, kept there by Hames. Hames chases Katz to the half boards now, and Katz is going to keep it, plays it off the... Boards a spin move to himself. Now dumping off the cage. Out in front, what a nifty little play there by General. Get it in front for the shot from Aiden McKenzie, but it goes off a defender. And that'll head down the floor. Braden Connors in there looking for the ball. It bypasses him for Joseph McBrady, who was called into goaltending duties yesterday. Aiden McKenzie in the corner again. He's got Myers out front. Myers has it roll off his stick. Connors was there for the Rebels. And through a crowd. Coming over for Katz. General. He's looking for the feed in front and then Connors. It's the backhand pass there. Ravenda flying across the crease. So Boyd able to cover up and we'll get a face off to his right. I think we might have an injury on the cherry pickers. I just saw uh, Anthony King walking a little gingerly. He's actually off the bench. Um, not sure. It looked, looked like it might be an ankle injury, so we'll have to see if he comes back. And they're getting the ice pack ready. Looks like it's going. Ticey Cowan. Going upstairs. We have an upper body injury. Yeah. From the outside, off the stick, and Anthony King was also involved in that mix-up with Doug Boyd and Tyler Summerfield from Thruway Muffler in yesterday's game. Face-off on the offside comes outside. General dumps it in on goal. Katz is there as well. Katz. Gets the stick on it, drags it around past the face-off circle. He's going to circle the net. Looked like he was going to try wrap around again, but it just rolled away. It seemed familiar. Aiden McKenzie leaves it in the corner for Myers. Ball still loose here, trying to cover up his Legault. And then Hames 
the stick on it to drag it back in. Lego does make the cover up, and the Rebels were screaming for a change there, so they'll get their opportunity now. Both goalies seem to be fighting that ball a little bit today as they're trying to freeze it. It continues to squirt free. Uh, I've seen it at both ends of the floor so far in this period. Another face-off win for the Cherry Pickers General. <laughs> Katz picks up his third assist. Or he should anyways, off the face-off win. And Sean General from outside. 15 from 14. This ball had to have curve on it because it looked like it was going wide and then sneaks in short side. There was not Locked. much room there. After a disastrous opening minute and a half for the Cherry Pickers, they've clawed their way back. They now take a 4-3 lead on four unanswered goals, but Flett trying to stop the bleeding. Boyd was down trying to cover, and you talked about it. Those balls just squirting away from the glove hand and way out of position. Flett from the point now. Boyd's going to leave for Katz. Katz gets away from his man. Now he's going to scoot it past Van Gool. Here comes Katz. Beats Kristen Birch. He's got a path to the net. Nice recovery by Birch, though, to get back into the passing or shooting lane. Ball came outside, so the cherry pickers were offside. They do touch up here. That's why General has to take it so far outside the zone. General doing his best Ticey Cowan impression, but... Can't go the whole way. Here is Cowan. Van Gool on him. He looks for General. General for Myers. Myers the shot and low glove side just away from the toe of Braden Legault. Make it five unanswered now in the final 41 seconds of the period. Other than the first minute five seconds, this has really been a cherry picker's period. Unfortunately for Legault, a uh, smaller goaltender in this age group, the only thing he can really do is come out another foot or two on that to challenge because he just wasn't, he, he stretched out, he looked like he had the angle, he just wasn't able to get the toe on that ball. Goaltending struggles continue in this opening period. Eight goals now on the board. That one's going to go to the right of Legault. Dumped in by, chased by Veal rather. And over top of everyone, down the length of the floor, another icing call, 23.9 on the clock. That's a good example of an icing call there that sometimes you hear people argue about, well, there was a player right there, couldn't he have played it? It should have been waved off. When the ball is in the air, same as a puck, the player is not required to play it. In the air, uh, they can let it go, and the icing stays on. General screaming for this pass. Looks like the defender, I don't know if he dropped his stick or chucked it in front, but Luke Grenier, as the shot went high anyways. Adriano Pupo trying to send the breakout pass. It ends up on the stick of Cowan. He shot similar. off the cage, up into the screen, and faceoff will come outside. That was similar to yesterday where uh, we pointed out if you're going to flip the ball and it's not going to go high enough against this cherry picker team, you don't want to, you want to make sure Ticey Cowan isn't in that general vicinity. The wrong guy to give the ball to in a scoring position. He tries the outside blast with time ticking down and not enough time for the cherry pickers to do anything with, but they respond for five unanswered after three straight from the Rebels. Cherry pickers lead. We'll be right back. Academy of Learning College has identified the gap between education and the stressors of the working world. We develop customized programs for each student at an affordable cost. Students can choose from over 30 diploma and certificate programs offered at any of Academy of Learning College's 17 Ontario-based locations. Simply a better way to learn. Learn more at academyoflearning.com.
Colby Flett with two quick goals. Tyler Van Gool as well for the Red Light Rebels, but then it was all cherry pickers. Two from Cowley, one from Jordan Katz on the wraparound, and two outside shots from Sean General. Doug Boyd now taking up the net to our right. And on the other side, Braden Legault, Connors and his line mate and the official all get tangled up off that face off as it tries to go down in the corner. Frankie Ravenda. Myers sliding over, played by the hand. He couldn't touch it with the stick. So just kicking it ahead, so it wasn't called for the glove pass. Nice play there by Aiden Veal. General behind his own net. Visiting bench occupied again by the Red Light Rebels in their red jerseys, running up the floor, representing the cherry pickers on the home side. Ticey Cowan, he's got two already. Looking Hattrick just had it roll away from him. Calling for it outside was Katz. Katz over for General. His shot bounces off a body in front. Goes up, hits the cage. They work into the corner where Aiden Veal is. And another stick of a rebel defender. This time Justin Hames goes flying as Katz gets it back. Streaking off the point is General. Through the legs by Katz. And Katz is going to pull it back now. This is Brandon Connors on him, and Connors gets it down for Boyd. Katz was calling Boyd to come out and play that, and Boyd just elects to cover up. I think Boyd made the right decision because I saw zero cherry pickers running back to help him out. Ticey Cowan, Sean General remain on the floor. The rest of that line changes up. They've only got four at the moment. As now the final line mate takes his spot. And Ghoul off the face off, slaps it towards the goal. Gets returned down. Sean General is going to lead the rush. He's got Myers with him, and they try to center it. Official's hand was up for icing, and all the Rebels players were just jogging down the floor. Sean General bats it into the legs of Cowan, and Cowan's got to take the long route. Circles his net, and they almost got the double team on. Flett trying to keep it in on the boards. It gets past General. Adriano Pupa's got to chase it down. Myers on him. Back for General. Steers it away from Pupo and then falling in front was Myers. Over for Brandon Foster. He's not sure where it is. Goes behind him. Steals it from Luke Grenier though. Myers in front. Bit of a jousting match over in front of the bench. And Flett can't hang on as Van Gool. And him tried to get it. Colby Flett, Ticey Cowan. Ball ends up in the corner. Matt Myers bats it out of midair. Brandon Foster. Inside center gets it through. Bypasses Myers. They go for general. He's going to work in on a breakaway. Nifty move and scores. Looked to me like he had a plan and he executed. Hattrick goal for Sean General. Couple moves there on Kristen Birch. I think we just saw the patented triple deke from uh, Jordan Katz with his fourth point of the game as he picks up another assist. I think Brandon Foster's deserved one as well there. As he did all the work in the corner. Streaking through his cats looking for his second goal, fifth point. It's going to be returned down to the left of Doug Boyd. Stolen away there by Austin Robbins. Robbins from behind the net. Justin Myers gets it. Goes for Jordan Katz. Myers. 
Takes up a spot in front of the net. Tried to look up for Brandon Foster, though. And holding Albano. Just dumps it in deep. Ticey Cowan over for Sean General. General out of the corner. Looks up for Foster. Foster was at the line. It got away from him. Icing waved off. Ticey Cowan from the hash marks again. Deeks around Robbins. Goes around the defender. Now he's going to have to circle the net, though. Calling for it up top is Jordan Katz. He gets it, lets it rip. General's there as well. General to Myers, he can't get the stick down in time. The defender was right there, may have got a piece of the blade. In the corner, coming out with it is Jacob Myers. Brandon Foster. Just gonna lift it in, bounces off the cage. General goes in to play for it. Back for Katz, Robbins on him, Katz. From the top of the face-off circle. Lifts his shot into the corner. And far side for the Rebels. It's lifted up, but still kept in by General. And General's shot goes over the net. Rebels a long way from home here in this period. And they've been stuck defensively for a while. Here's Cowie. Tyson Cowan in the corner. General again. Up top for Foster, Brandon Foster shoots it into the midsection of the defender. And Andrew Batista, he can't clear the zone. Gabriel Gagnon will try and Cowan's there again. Cowan, stick handles around Gagnon, back in front. And it just rolls off his stick at the last minute. Cowan again. Whole ton of room for Brandon Foster and he looks past. Jacob Katz calls for it and the shot goes wide. General the second chance. Tries a third time and forced to go behind the net as Gagnon is there. Finally, it's just lifted out and down the floor. Boyd comes out as that shot was on net and at least relieving some of the pressure for the red light Rebels. Rebels need a stoppage here so they can get a change. Cowan <laughs> goes back around Hames after deking out Batista first. General off the bench was flat. Went straight after General. As Katz comes through, takes the shot, and Cowan, all alone on the crease, it bounces to him. And make it seven unanswered now. Cowan's been displaying some stick skills that you typically see on the ice, not so much in ball hockey, putting it through his legs while moving. Here on the goal, this was just a nice play of a cast bringing it in from the blue line. Got himself to an open spot. Slot, took the shot. Cowan was just parked in the, uh, parked in the, just outside the crease to tap it in. 88-14, and I think they said goalie. They did. Boyd getting in on the action. Doug Boyd, the goalie assist. Aiden Veal, he tries to wrap around and it just sails in front of Legault. Under four to play in the second period here. Myers sends it deep for Kristen Birch. She gets it to center and that starts the counter attack rush. Van Gool over for Flett, Boyd comes out, trips up Van Gool. Sorry Flett and Boyd is still down. That was an awkward collision. This flat went over top of the board. Flett just looks like he's trying to make a play, trying to deke around, um, and he had his head down. So when Boyd came out aggressive to make that poke check, when Flett looked up, I think it was a surprise to him that Boyd was there. You could see May have taken a knee pad from Flett up in the neck area. Yeah, look, as he went over back. the top. So. Trainer wasn't called out. Boyd remains in the cage. And now he's staring down a face off to his left, but it's chipped up and out by Tyler Myers, recognizing they got to get it away from the goaltender here. And that looks like where Boyd's paying a lot of the attention, that left shoulder area. Still not 100% as we look at Kristen Birch. Spends a lot of time out there on the floor on defense. And 
They've been working around her all afternoon. It's her pass again, though, that starts the counter rush. Flett gets it back, and Van Gool was out. So I had to touch up. Adriano Pupa again. Bypass is Flett, and Myers is back there. Flett dumps it into the corner, though, as a clash of sticks. We'll see who the official says it goes off, and he says it went off the... Rebels player last, so the faceoff will come outside. Phil, he's got it. The officials asking for another one of those Bauer balls. And Birch able to keep it in at center. Only momentarily though as Veal bypasses her but it rolled off his stick and Flett brought it back in. Van Gool steals it away from Myers. We're at a nice orange ball temperature day. We haven't had many of those yet this year. For those of you who are new to ball hockey, the orange ball, in, including Matt, <laughs> The orange ball is a warmer temperature ball. The pink ball is uh, your colder weather ball. Just a different density. So uh, depending on the temperature, it's going to play the same. So if it's colder, you're playing with the pink ball. In a little warmer weather, you're going to the orange ball. But they're going to play the same because of the different density. It must be at an interesting temperature here. The, the officials actually got a pink one on them. And... Uh, So it looked like he was about to pull that one out, but they, they stick with the orange. What color were we yesterday? Were we pink? pink? Definitely a much nicer day. You lied to me, though. You said the, the doors would be open. Well, they might be. We could. Okay. In behind Van Gool. You, you can time lapse that, Matt. I got my time lapsing in yesterday. I have a feeling I'll be a little busy as we've got a number of games on the schedule. Van Gool stops the seven straight run, getting around Boyd. The wraparound bounced off his stick and went high. Boyd was looking for it, and the defense unable to bat it out of midair. 12 from 18. I've been seeing a number of wraparounds today. That one just, uh, that ball seemed to have eyes. It just kept going up, it seemed to roll up Boyd's arm and he wasn't able to, uh, to track it down and ended up in the back of the net. General in his own zone. Comes up the near side, able to clear the zone. Ticey Cowan takes a look. Tries to find General up the middle. Nice play defensively. As Birch stepped up and she was able to knock that away. And she's chasing Cowan into the offensive zone. Boyd's covered up a bunch of those, but this time mixes it up as he dumps it into the corner. Now a poke check. That's one where maybe he should have covered with Flett right in front of him. And now he recognizes and... I think he's going to make up for his mistake there. Flett and Van Gool. It was interesting. Boyd took a look back to make sure his foot was in the crease. That's something you find a little more with our street hockey rules. Uh, there are some other tournaments that we run that would be a four-on-four -four format, um, which... Really, the most popular one uh, that, that we host at VHI is the Walter Gretzky Street Hockey Tournament in Brantford. And to prevent the, the goalies from running out behind the net and freezing it and, uh, and causing the defensive team to clear, um, we have the rule in place that the goaltender has to have their foot in the crease. So you, you see uh, that sort of set in Doug Boyd's mindset, I see, as he's looking back. 
Final 35 seconds of the period here. Looking for the glove save. The shot comes from the point though. And that's another blast. That, uh, that was your definition of bar down, I believe. I'm not sure what the discussion is with the official and the and the coach, but he's giving him an explanation. And he seems to they seem to be agreeing. That rarely happens. <laughs> A lot of times coaches coaches do appreciate that explanation. If the referee gives it to them, that 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 tends to diffuse the situation. Icing hand is up, but it looks like Tysey Cowan's gonna get there. Under 10 to go though, so Cowan gets around his man, has a peak for the clock. He's gotta get a shot away, and he can't do it as Batista and Aiden Veal collide. And it takes us to the second intermission, 8-4 in favor of the Cherry Pickers. 10 minutes to go. Canada is the leader in the fire alarm monitoring industry, specializing in the early notification of fire alarm signals to the fire department. Our experienced customer service staff will work closely with you to develop the best solution for your specific monitoring needs, and our CFAA certified technicians are qualified to perform your installation quickly and efficiently. Be sure to choose Fire Monitoring of Canada because saving time saves lives. Visit us at fire-monitoring.com. Semi-final in the Bantam Division, spring teener of, teaser rather, of the Youth Ontario Cup. Doug Boyd able to bat that one away. It's been all Rebels early. Then it turned all Cherry Pickers. We've gone back and forth a little bit, but the Cherry Pickers run was bigger than that of the Rebels, seven straight for the Rebels. Stump deep, six points for Jordan Katz. Trying for another one, but lifts it up into the screening and they say it was tipped off the stick of Kristen Birch, so they face off to the right of Brandon Legault. Faceoff comes outside, so the forwards touch up on the line. They're going to leave there for Aiden McKenzie. McKenzie sending it through to goal. Stick of the goaltender out of his reach. There's Myers sending one in. Legault went down. Flutz just going to bang it off the boards. And they're going to say Cowan was close enough, so they wave off the icing. Cowan around his back to get around Grenier. Comes back for Aiden McKenzie again. McKenzie trying to split the defense and it rolls in on Legault. He smothers that. Another shot outside where the other Bantam semifinal game is going. Actually, no, it, would, it is not. We only Sorry. have the one semifinal today for Bantam as uh, three-way muffler it received a bye to the finals. Thruway Muffler will face the winner of this, this matchup here. Yes. Another look at the goal is on the crease. Jacob Myers. 14. The recipient of the pass. Off the face-off play. Face-off wins for the Cherry Pickers. Have been huge so far this weekend. Another face-off win. They gained possession. In general, was held up at the blue line. That puts the team offside. Oh, 
Katz and Van Gool at the face-off circle. They play it back for General. General on the boards for McKenzie. And you can really see the curve on that ball with that shot originating right where we are. This curve well away from the goal, though. Comes Ticey Cowan. Cowan around Birch. Tries to go through his legs again. And Legault. Leaves it for Adriano Pupo, who gets it up for Van Gool. Boyd goes down to kick that one away. Ends up in the corner for Flett. Flett and Batista now. Falls in front of Batista, he can't get the stick on it. He comes for Jordan Katz. Katz for Cowan. Cowan backhands for General. General for McKenzie, who's right at the faceoff dot. Let's it rip still. He gets caught up in the blocker arm of Legault and away from General. Icing waved off as here comes Brandon Connors after General in the corner. General stops, still trying to get away from Connors. Now he does, bringing it up over the blue line. Red line into the attacking zone. General is going to go all the way here. Kicks it back to himself. Now gives off for Cowan. And a nice slide over by the defender. Kristen Birch. Still trying to get away from Cowan. Cowan spins off two defenders, though, into the corner. Another really good slide there by Gabriel Gagnon. And I think the word is out for the Rebels that this guy's just going to try and stick handle around you. Birch gets taken out there. And the one-timer over to the far side. And Rebels don't like that their defender was dropped in the corner. from 88. So Jordan Katz big game continues as does Tyson Cowan. Tyson Cowan now with his fifth point. Go along with the hat trick. A hat trick for Jordan Katz matching four assists. As he's the face off man and a lot of the Cherry Pickers plays come off the faceoffs. Three on two rush though now for the Rebels. Here's Batista. Batista runs in, shoots it over top of the cage. Boyd is there. Cowan loses the stick as it goes flying into the corner. Batista in front. Boyd can't hang on. And it gets shot off the side of the net. Cowan now kicks it out so he can retrieve the stick. A nice play there. Justin Hames returns it back into the zone. Off the foot of Gabriel Gagnon. Danielle looking for Brandon Connors. Connors off the shoulder of Boyd, down into the glove. And that'll cause another face off in the cherry picker zone. 9 4 now, the lead has been stretched by the cherry pickers. 5.56 to go in the third. Again, the winner of this match in the Banton division will go on to face the Thruway Muffler Club who receive a bye through to the championship game. Ticey Cowan works into the attacking zone now, leaves for General. The trailer is Katz, and he just shoots it wide and looks skyward. No signs of letting up here. It's now a 9-1 run after a 3-0 start for the Rebels. The cherry pickers are rolling. General over for Connors. Connors chips it off the boards. Bit of a discussion between the officials whether that was icing or not. And here comes General. General has that tapped off his stick by Gagnon coming off the point. His cats. Three cherry pickers players low now. General back for Katz, fans on the shot. As it's come out, Frankie Ravenda chipped away by, from him by Aiden Veal. General again deep. He's got Gagnon on him again. And Cowan takes over. Gagnon goes after Cowan. 
Cowan around Gagnon. Now Batista helps out. Still working to the net. And that one off the shaft of the stick, it looked like, and Batista clears it away. Stick saved by Legault. Comes back for General, though. Veal keeping it in. In the shot, it's underneath of Legault. He's got to spin there looking for it. And he gets caught up in the pad somewhere. This is the goal that we weren't able to show you as you can see the defender go down in the corner. Underneath us preparing for their 12 o'clock game in the midget division. The Ontario Selects will play, it looks like a shorthanded Welland Kings squad. We'll get to that when that game takes to the floor. Again, that midget division matchup. Semifinals here. In Bantam, since Cowan goes around Birch, the shot, I think, hit the glove of Legault and then dropped down in front. Legault wasn't sure where it was, and Cowan puts it in again. Ticey Cowan, the story of this game so far, 3.55 on the clock now. The Rebels coach wants a, at least a good finish out of his squad in the final four here. Tacey's used that move a few times now. It looks like he's going to toe drag, but he actually flips it, flips it to the other side of his stick and uh, still is able to drag around without turning over and it, to, to toe drag it. It's not something you see too often, but it seems to be effective. Adriano Pupo winding up for the slap shot, recognized by Cowan. Cow in general, they look for Katz for the finish. And Katz not able to get it. Birch does get her stick on it though, bats it up the boards. Up and out here for Grenier. Grenier, Van Gogh trailing his Flett. Flett's gonna get there, but not before Veal. He's played a great defensive game, keeping plays out of dangerous areas. Veal gets it again. Looks to play it off the cage and ends up It goes into the mesh, but the trail official said it hit the cage first. We see the official pointing to that section as we watch the cherry pickles huddle up in around Doug Boyd and Colby Flett. In there for the conversation. Here's the face off into the corner. Myers is there. Played off the boards behind the back for General. Over for Brandon Foster, his shot. The official says no as it goes off the corner of the crossbar. All bar. Batista. He's got Veal on him, a delayed penalty coming here. It's touched up a boarding call against Veal. Here's another look at this shot. Six blue, two minutes, pull. Just as we praise Veal for his uh, great defense, he heads off, I believe they called it holding. Looked initially like a boarding signal, but hold is called. Katz works into the zone, pulls it back on the backhand, shorthanded. Nice save there by Legault. Katz, General's calling for it up top. Whips it through, looking one-timer for Foster. And Myers has it chipped around him. Two on one rush here. Three on one now as Batista joins in. General, the defender back, goes down, blocks the shot. And they call General for a slide. Team blue, two minutes, sliding. Let's 
Once again, action outside as well as in here under the tent. Great facility here, Ball Hockey International, St. Catharines. Right on the shores of the Welland Canal, like we said, and the spring teaser. Youth Ontario Cup presented by Bauer on the JVI Sports Network. We're with you all afternoon. Gold medals upcoming in Pee Wee, Bantam, and Midget. Midget semifinal to follow this one. The winner of this game will play throughway muffler. In the corner, Cowan. Fleet's gonna steal it from him. One minute to go in the two-man advantage. As here comes Myers. Myers climbs the ladder, tries to lift it over top of Legault. That would have been a pretty play. Five on three, off the <laughs> inside of the post, and it rattles around. What an individual effort there by Jacob Myers. And the unassisted goal. Bats it down first, drags it back, and watch the finish there. Off the pipe and in. Working out with it now. Here comes Cowan. Steals it away from Grenier. Still five on three. Cowan lifts it up. Tries to go around Birch, and she's onto that move now as she stick, stick checks it away. What a pinch there by Myers. He came all the way from the faceoff to keep the play alive. Cowan over for Katz. Lego goes with him. Lego down again, and he's going to cover up with Cowan and Katz on the doorstep. And Katz, a tap of the stick on the leg pad. Another face-off win here for Cherry Pickers. Shot goes off the back. Cage comes up here for Van Gool. Cowan is there again as well. Cowan stops at the face-off dot. Has it stolen away though, so Myers, the most recent goal scorer, has to go back to play for it. Katz drops it for himself. Down behind, Cowan's in front, the one-timer, Lego is there. And again, he's gonna cover up 7.5. On the clock, the Cherry Pickers will contend for the gold medal, but the Rebels coach was asking for a strong four minutes, I think. He'll be pleased at least with the defense and the goaltending here down the stretch. And as we say that, Myers rips another one from outside and they'll just run the rest of the clock down. A huge game for Jordan Katz, nine points off 11 Jacob, goals. 14. Jacob Myers gets two, Ticey Cowan with four, and hat tricks for Jordan Katz. Sean General, the cherry pickers, will face through a muffler. Stay tuned in the Midget Division. We will go off the air, but we'll be back shortly with Ontario Selects facing the Welland Kings as our coverage of the spring teaser continues here on the JBI Sports Network presented by Bauer. <laughs> 